consciousness is eternal. It participates with the body, but is not defined by the body. It participates with the brain, but is not generated by the brain. Consciousness is what's really going on here. Consciousness itself is the thing which we tell stories about. That's what we're doing here in matter, is telling stories. We discovered story when we realized that we could have more than one point of awareness. When consciousness consciously split into two, just because that sounds like fun, that's the Big Bang. That's when the original egg cracks open and darkness and light say, let's just separate a little bit and see what happens when we interplay. Because darkness is a property of the light. Darkness is the way that you identify light as being less dominant. It is not because the light has been conquered by the darkness that dominance the idea that there must be dominance when there are two forces which interact, one of them must dominate, one of them must control the other. Thus entirely missing the point that it is out of tunis that energy arises in the system. It is out of the interplay of partners in a dance that beauty is created. It is not that it is imperative for one of these to control the other. It is that giving and taking is itself the engine of life. We have over-identified with expansion. We have forgotten that our actual identity is the wave, is the process by which things expand and contract and expand and contract and expand and contract. The process by which a wave corkscrews through space. The process by which life with a capital L moves through time, one life at a time one experience at a time, one story at a time. And the stories build upon each other and the story itself goes forward forever. And if we confuse the big story with my story, we cripple ourselves, we fall from the knowledge of our oneness through the agency of the knowledge of my singleness. Now my singleness is a new power brought to the system, and it's a good one. At the same time, it is time to reabsorb that singleness into the oneness so that it can be more fully expressed. It is not a loss of the power of singleness. It is an elevation of the power of singleness to be fully yourself within the context of being fully us at the same time. It is a massive upgrade. You're not losing what you are. You're gaining a monumentally higher expression of it. It's going to be really, really great. We can't lose our nerve. See, it's come to my attention that people are afraid to hope because it hurt so bad when they gave up hope. They were told that growing up means giving up the hope that giving up on being yourself. Because now it's your job to stop being who you are, stop being full alive, fully alive, and start working in the system, for the system, for the sake only of the system, and not for yourself, not for your family, not for your friends, not for love, not for pleasure, for the system. Because your purpose for being is to support the system which lives off of your life force. Well, as I said the words, they are in fact true. Our purpose for being is to support the system of which we're a part. But we have been diverted from understanding the actual system that matters. We have been diverted into believing that the system of which we are a part is the particular corporate entity represented by the economy. The old book talked about mammon. This is not new news. We have known that this is a mistake for a really, really, really long time. And we keep falling back into the trap. I believe it's an entirely unintended consequence. There is no actual enemy until we decide that there is. We're all trying to get to the same place in the same bus. So, we divide up into factions, into organs, into personalities, into individuals, into corporate entities. 
And each of these corporate entities explores a different aspect of the, the simulation, explores a different aspect of the environment, and finds out how to be good at one particular thing. The liver learns how to be a liver, the lungs learn how to be lungs, the hands learn how to be hands. We have many parts, which all have their own intelligence, their own possibility, their own need which need to be protected and to partake of the energies of the whole and which can in turn benefit the corporate entity, benefit the body. But the phrase, the body of Christ, to describe a group of people who are seeking awakening, who seek to be re born, who seek to be incarnated, who seek to be filled with the Holy Spirit, who seek for their avatar to be married to a higher consciousness and operated with purposefulness, with the mind of Christ. See, the mind of the higher expression, the mind of the greater self, the mind of the collective awareness, which arises out of all of our information being gathered together. Right on. We are so going to rock this thing. Oh, we're going to win. We're going to win. But in order to win, we have to really do the thing. We have to enter into the new world that we know we would rather see and operate by its rules. And its rules cannot be, we don't want that, because then we'll just end up with that. Remember, what you judge, you become. And that's why we've gotten in this fix, is because we've, we've tried to smack away a world we didn't like over and over and over again. When what we need to do is recognize that the world is ours to make and make it.